Greetings, brothers and sisters. Blessings and shalom. I am unable to do this live to show you scripture. So I will put uh, some scripture in the description box of this video for you to go pray over and check out and read. I really wanted to give you guys a visual of what I'm talking about, but my mic is not working on my laptop. I'm ordering a new mic, uh, but as of now, I'm micless as far as my laptop goes to, to go on a live. But I wanted to share this with you, with what the Lord revealed to me upon prayer uh, to him asking about the spirit in me and what has been going on with me in the spirit, how the spirit is leading and guiding me and all the things I'm feeling in my spirit lately as far as handling people and things uh, that is not really normal uh, of how I would handle things and people. Uh, usually I am more vocal to speak or have a conversation to defend truth against sin, to witness and share and of course plant a seed. But the spirit in me is not wanting to speak at all at people, towards people, to people and what I am seeing with them and, you know, uh, my perspective has even changed on how I want to even deal with people. Uh, the spirit in me no longer wants to even ascribe to a direct tell it like a T.I. is with people in the way uh, I normally do. Not being offensive, but just not sugarcoating things or truth in the way I usually do. Um, it's like I'm on a new different spiritual method of how it is or how I want to now conduct myself towards people. And if there is an element of a direct tell it like a T.I. is that could hinder and affect negatively the grace I want to and now rather extend to people, then I'm no longer going to use that tell it like a TIS method the way I used to normally do, naturally do before. The the spirit in me really wants to now extend grace through silence. And my spirit is also grieving right now in this new method. <laughs> In this silent morning also, um, I am not even tempted to to say things to people in regards to holiness, obedience, and repentance uh, at, at what I see them doing and choosing wrong, holding on to their sin. Usually, I will be vocal towards that, to speak about that uh, in a way of telling them about how we should operate in our flesh, turn to the Lord, repent of our sins, pray, and all that. Um, uh, it's just... And and I always do. I'm 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 vocal with people, especially towards those expressing themselves, not to be wanting to uphold godly standards, but more fleshly standards instead. But really, I'm just now in in this silent mode towards people, not tempted to witness. Uh, just being in this spiritual mourning towards people right now, my heart is just saddened at the sinful state of people and the choices that they are making. Uh. That are not of God. When usually I'm more vocal to talk to them in order to to at least plant a seed, uh, but the spirit in me just is silent to just want to extend grace through silence and in in, in the, this morning that is upon me right now for them instead. It's sort of like a glimpse of what Yeshua goes through with people who he sees and hears and knows that they rather do what they want to do. They could possibly lead to separation from him uh, with them not wanting his input, his advice, his direction. And he just silently watches them going along in their sin and their rebellion against him. But he still has that love and he still extends that grace for them, even though they're not aware of it or don't even want it. And it's just sorrowful and just sad to, to watch. So that's kind of where I've been in and I've, that's what I've been dealing with uh recently because I'm 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 looking at the sinful state of people not accepting truth or Yeshua. And some know better. But they're not accepting Yeshua. They're not accepting his grace. They're just holding on to their sin, not repenting. And I'm just not really pressed in my spirit to speak out about that. Or at least addressed it in in order to plant a seed. I'm not even tempted to. And it's just um me observing who people are and what they rather do in this silent morning. And what I am feeling in my spirit is, is just, is very different now. Uh, 
I'm thinking it could be something that's happening. Something on a spiritual level that could be going on right now. That's changing me in the spirit. So I prayed about it, asking the Lord about it, because I'm noticing the new way in in, in my spirit, how I am uh, reacting, if or not reacting, just being silent, really, towards people that is not normal. And it's not like there's a fight against what the spirit in me is leading me to do instead, which is just to extend grace and silence. But it's just different now um and i prayed about it and the lord revealed it to me and when he did it just interconnected to so well with what the spirit in me was already feeling that i didn't quite have a full handle on yet to really you know grasp but it definitely explains the change uh in me and i can't really show you scripture guys right now so you're going to have to go do the work yourself through prayer first about it but the Lord led me to Ezekiel 9. And please read and study this book. It's only 11 verses long. But to summarize this chapter, Ezekiel 9 talks about the vision of the slaughter of the guilty uh, that the Lord was ordering out. It talks about the vision of wickedness that was uh, being committed in Jerusalem. And the Lord gave orders to angelic beings, particularly one in linen who carries a scribe horn, I do believe it's called, who is distinguished from the rest, but payment upon the sins and the abominations that were taking place is now ready to be paid you know with the lord having it up to here you know with it but the lord sends out a few things a few orders um two in particular is for the one distinguished being with the scribe horn to go forth and put a mark upon the remnant to be preserved uh in the coming destruction meaning he is to go out uh and mark spiritually of course with the mark of god those who are in god uh while also the lord orders the other angelic beings forth a, a, a warrant sign for the execution of those who will not uh, be receiving the mark of god upon their foreheads and we know there is so much emphasis and concern about the mark of the beast. But we never take into account those with the mark of God. Because before the mark of the beast is implemented physically, God is going to mark those in and of him on their foreheads with the mark of the with the mark with that seal of God on their forehead for, first. This silent enemy will know who's who in the end days. There are those who will be marked with the mark of God on their forehead. And then there, there will be those who eventually get the mark of the beast in the end days. And I was reading Ezekiel 9 at verse 4. It really spoke out to me because Ezekiel 9 at verse 4, and it reads, The Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city throughout all of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of men who sigh in distress and grieve over all the repulsive acts which are being committed in it. When I read that, it really resonated with me because my spirit has been in this mourning, in this sinful state, uh, uh, in this, in this, been in mourning at the sinful state of people, uh, in this, in this grieving state it has been in just looking at people, choosing to sin, holding on to their sin. It has been in this, this, this grievous mournful state, uh, to where I can't even witness against it in order to plant a seed. I'm not even tempted to towards them like I usually would be towards lost people who choose who are choosing sin or to hold on to their sin. So this is what the Lord was revealing to me that is happening right now, brothers and sisters. The Lord is sending forth a spiritual mark upon his people, as well as a spiritual order of execution upon those who will not be receiving the mark on their forehead. People who are choosing sin won't repent, associating themselves in abominations. Their fate is being sealed to where, to, to where either by famine or pestilence, whatever, who knows they will go through, but the judgment that they're sealed in or their, their fate is going to be in accordance with is upon them. Uh, and it's by how they have lived by their own free will choices and decisions that they have made rejecting Christ 
And if you read Ezekiel 9 at verse 4, it correlates significantly, if not matches directly to Revelation chapter 7, verse 2 and 3 that says, Then I saw another angel coming up from the rising of the sun, holding the seal of the living God. And with a loud voice, he called out to the four angels to whom it was granted to have authority and power to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we seal, meaning mark, the bond servants of God on their forehead. And Ezekiel uh, 9 verse 4 also matches up with, you know, Revelation 9 verse 4 that says they were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but to hurt only the people who do not have the seal, meaning the mark of God on their foreheads. And it also speaks to Revelation 14, 1 that says, then I looked and this is what I saw. The lamb stood firmly established on the mount on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his father's name inscribed on their foreheads, signifying God's own possession. And we know in Jeremiah 13, 17, it says, but if you will not listen and obey, my soul will weep in secret for your pride. My eyes will weep bitterly and flow with tears because the Lord's flock has been taken captive. If you read Ezekiel 7, 9, it says, my eye will show no pity, nor will I spare you. I will repay you in accordance with your ways while your abominations are in your midst. Then you will know and understand that it is I, the Lord, who strikes you. And it also says this in Ezekiel 5.11. And I believe this is what is occurring in the spirit towards those in God and those not. Because God is weeping for the loss, for the pride and the rebellion and the stubbornness for those who are not obeying, who will not obey who will not repent, who will not turn from their sins. And the sins of the law should matter of sorrow to us, brothers and sisters. I am spiritually mourning for those who I know the Lord cannot mean because they are turning against him. They are rejecting him. They don't even want, they don't even want him. They are headed for a demonic calamity out of their own free will choices that they are making. So this is what the Lord revealed to me that he is doing right now. Which explains why I feel in my spirit uh, that is making me mourn and not really speak up because most of these people are, they have no ears. They could not hear me, let alone be able to receive me because they're so far gone in their sins and their abominations and they are soon to be give, given over to the, the, the destroyer. Uh, they're going to have to go through the judgment to where they are brought to a point to see truth in the way of righteousness through a perilous time. While those in God are getting their seal of protection uh, in the time of the destroyer, when uh, whenever that plays out, however that plays out, uh, and just my spirit is in sadness and mourning, you know, just choosing not to speak out right now. But I don't believe this will be a forever thing with me. I think those who will not have the mark of Christ, who are being spiritually sentenced right now, until that plays out physically, unlike now, the Lord has ordered their path in the way of that refinement period, that purging process. So they are not now able to hear. But when the son of prediction comes in, the t in the time he will come, I believe then the spirit in me and, and, and others will uh, be more vocal in, in uh, a time of where you will see physical slaying to where those not marked in God play out to where the harvest will be very ripe. And then there will be those who will then be able to hear and receive in the way of their salvation in order to be saved. And I could be wrong, but that's what I believe is going on for now. Unless the Lord shows me different or correct me, corrects me. But this is big deal and big news. Does this mean, you know, it's too late for everybody? I don't know. The spirit in me is not witnessing or planting a seed. But you on your end could be led to witness and still plant seeds. So obey that. And I pray the Holy Spirit uh, leads you and guides you. And I pray anyone you come in contact with has an open heart to receive what the Holy Spirit puts in you to, to tell them. They can get them towards Christ and our repentance. Uh, and I pray that in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. But this reminds me of the blood of the Israelites that they put upon their doorposts to indicate to death, the destroyer, that they could not that it could not touch them. It had to go elsewhere. For they were claimed in God. And death, the destroyer, could not touch them. So, 
for those who are sealed in God, you know, we have nothing to be vexed about or we should not be vexing anything that could happen to us in this world. And yes, it's, it's disheartening to know the state of people and where they are headed in time. But those sealed in God, that just means we have to get ready for, for them when that harvest is ripe. When we, we have to stay in prayer for the lost interceding right now. That even at a, lat a later time of, of, of much peril, that their souls will be saved, that they will turn to Christ, even dying for his name's sake. We really have to be praying and interceding for those who are lost with that warrant of execution set out before them that has not played out physically yet. But the sealing of the servants of God on their forehead, as it is mentioned in Ezekiel 9 uh, and throughout Revelation, but it's also... Uh, also is a security that is taking place with God's people right now, uh, as well as, you know, that order of execution uh, being sent out, marking people's fate who are, who are not being marked right now with that seal of God upon their forehead. But meaning that they're, they're going to be given over to the destroyer. Uh, they're going to be handed over to him. So I just, I wanted to share that with you guys. Please pray over what I'm saying. Take it to the Lord. Those who will not be marked in God on their forehead, who is who is getting that, that spiritual sentence of execution upon them due to their rebellion and stubbornness and abomination, who will not uh, be sealed in God and to receive their protection. We do know that the refinement is the purging pr process to where men will have another chance to turn to Christ. So let us thank the Lord God for his, for his mercy, even in that. Uh, so let's pray for Let's pray for them mightily. Let's pray for the lost. Let us let us extend grace to those who won't stop sinning. Let us extend grace to those who won't repent. Let us pray for them, brothers and sisters. Because if you have a cold, null and void heart towards them now, that refinement period, that purging process is going to be for you too. Because if you don't extend grace, you won't be given grace. And again, I'm not encouraging anybody to be silent at this time or not to speak out i'm just conveying what has been in my spirit uh if you feel led to reach someone go for it go for it and may you be used by the power of the holy spirit who guides your words i love you guys until next live or video stay dwelled in your covenants unto god blessings and shalom